Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in a prior video, we took a look at this little microscope from the company Apexel. Now basically this was a small microscope adapter that went on the front of a cell phone. Now, very effective. I've actually used this quite a bit. I've used it in a number of other reviews to help sort of enhance those reviews by getting up close and personal with some of the features. But today, a standalone unit. Here is the Apexel APL-MS008. This is a handheld digital microscope, battery powered, handheld standalone unit. It records in 1080, has, I'm hoping, really quality overall optics and the ability to, again, get further into detail and help me further illustrate some of my videos. So today, what we're going to do, we're going to bust this out. I'm going to look at it in detail, show you some examples. You're actually going to get a sneak peek of some other videos that I'm going to do because, quite frankly, I'm going to start to get some of the footage. I'm going to use this to get some of the footage that I'm going to need to illustrate those other videos but with that said i have a whole bunch to do and a whole bunch to share with you and if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what i'm about to get into do me a favor stay tuned Now, before we get too far, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Apexel who did provide this for review. And so at this point, I have actually already busted this out of the package, started taking a look, got it charged up, and kind of figured out what I needed to get into. Now, this does require a memory card. So a micro SD card is required. Now, I do have some. I use them in my GoPros. And so I do at this point need to bust the micro SD card out of the GoPro get it put into this unit. Now on the side, you'll see right away, there is a cover that exposes both a USB type C charging port. It's also a communication port for downloading your footage. And then you'll see a small slot where you put in that micro SD card. And because this does record in 1080, you do need a fairly large size card. So here you'll see I have 128 gigabyte Samsung Pro micro SD card which will require me to format it. Now I can tell you when I was messing around with this the first time, I had an undersized card and it was wreaking havoc. So definitely getting an appropriately sized card is going to be key. Now terminals, you'll notice I have the terminals pointed towards that USB type C port and popping it in. Now, if things go a little bit funny on you, something worth paying attention to, there's a small reset button that you can leverage to actually reset the unit. You basically push it in with like a, you know, a paper clip or something like that, and that will get everything reset. Now, I did find that when I was messing around with this, with the smaller micro SD card, it did require me to hit reset. This comes from the factory with some film over the screen. So on the back side here, you'll see a dedicated screen. Now, as I long press here and turning on the unit, here you can see welcome. Now it says right away, format the card. I'm gonna go into my um, mode button here. So a long press goes into that mode button on the left-hand side. And now I'm going to scroll down and through the menus. Now a single press goes from screen to screen, menu to menu. So a long press gets into the menu. And this is what I'm talking about. If you're not careful when you fire this thing up, and if you don't get into all the programming the right way, it kind of gets stuck. And at this point, it's literally completely frozen. So what I need to do is dig in here, press the reset, which is right there. And now I can turn this back on. Again, it's gonna tell me to format the card. So a long press, now a single press, working down and through the menu to format hit the power button, confirm. Now everything's gonna work fine. But until that memory card is formatted, I found this can be a little bit wonky. Now you'll see at this point, everything rocking and rolling. So this does have a couple of different modes. There is a light on the bottom as you take a look here. This is a dedicated LED and it has two brightness settings. So if I hold down the plus button, that will put it on brightness setting two or if I hold down the minus button, that's brightness level number one. As I hit the mode button, this goes to 1080p on the video mode. Single press playback, single press photo mode. So that's your photo mode. And as we continue to get through this here, 
it's basically the three main modes. But if I long press again and get back into my menu, you can see there's a whole bunch of different options. So my different options, shooting method, continuous shooting, take pictures in a loop, sharpness, color, exposure compensation, quick preview, date label, all sorts of things that you can get into. Now I'm not going to get into too much of that. As I long press back here, you'll see I'm going to get into that video mode. So right now it does say 1080p. If I look at the date 3-5-2022, I did set that. That is accurate. And 15-09-11, that means 3-09 and 14 seconds. Double checking everything against my cell phone, that is accurate. So I am good to go and ready to record in 1080p. Now we're going to do a couple of things here. On the side, this is your focus. So I'm going to dial this focus in and I'm going to show you my grid. So as we take a look here, I'm going to get on a white square which is a one inch by one inch grid. And that's gonna give you an example of how close up this is. Now, as I rock my focus here and get nice and tight, I'm actually gonna to go to brightness level two, which I think should help enhance the picture. And I am going to get on a single one of these little tiny dots. So here, as I press the power button, single press, that's going to record. Now I'm hoping at this point, not only is it recording the video, but it should also be recording my audio. Now you'll notice that this screen, I can angle the screen around. And as I start to pan around on the actual video, well again, you're seeing that single dot. That single dot is like maybe 1 32nd of an inch. As I scroll over here, nice and careful. Let's find another dot. There's one scrolling over there's one of the lines so you can see the actual oh that's just a scratch there's the line so you can see the actual line of um gray color between the one inch lines again that's a very fine little area so you're seeing a pretty tight little box here when you look at the actual uh, screen and the actual overall size of the picture in the microscope. And so the reality is this is actually much less a microscope and really more a macro lens. I mean, the reality of this is a microscope would be far, far further in getting tighter and tighter. This is really a macro scope in my opinion. So a macro lens, good detail overall, gets nice and tight, but I wouldn't necessarily say this is a microscope. And so now as we get the MS008 digital handheld microscope into some use. Now you'll see here I am getting some imagery of some basic items, things that you may be familiar with. Now keep in mind the fact that this does have two different modes. So basically a 20 time mode and then it does have digital zoom. So everything you see here is fully zoomed out. So as wide as it can possibly go. But as we take a look here, not only am I leveraging the video, but also the photo so you can get a comparison. And well here, very simple. This is actually just a very basic tablecloth that I have on my dining room table. So as you take a look, you will notice that you are able to see down to very fine detail and individual threads. Now moving forward and well, quite frankly, speaking of dining room table, the table that I was at has a really neat grain pattern and has a very nice gray colored stain. So here you can see as I zoom in again, this is approximately a 20 time zoom, taking advantage of the fact that you know, I do have the ability to look up close, get some details. Now, this is not the most clear all the time. It's pretty good, but you'll notice that in terms of the video quality and the photo quality, a little bit of graininess, but not too bad. It is a function of the overall brightness. The brighter you can get things, the more clear it will be. But as you take a look here, you'll notice that the table did have a nice wood grain pattern and you can see the gray stain. But as we move forward, this is a little bit surreal taking a look here. Well, what exactly is it? I can tell you that overall, this is definitely pretty sweet. And while I'm not trying to be facetious, literally 
sweet. This is a strawberry close up. So as you take a look at the leaves, as you take a look at the actual seeds themselves and the actual flesh of the fruit, very cool. And you'll notice that the seed actually does consume roughly about the size of the frame. So when you look at a strawberry, a very, very tiny seed, but it does pretty much fill the frame all in all. The overall frame filling about 2.3 millimeters worth of overall width in terms of the size of the object. Now, next, this is something that I love to do in combination with my knife videos. If you've been watching my channel over the past number of reviews, I have been taking advantage of the fact that with these microscopes, and I guess I'll say again, macroscopes, you do have the ability to get very close, nice and tight to the subject. And for blades, it's really, really fun. You can look at the quality of the edge. You can see how refined it is. And this helps you not only take a look at the blade when it's brand new, but if you think there's damage, you can evaluate the blade. You can see how it's held up. If there's chips, if there's rolls, dings and dents or anything like that. So in this particular case, very nicely done. You will see this footage in an upcoming review. And very similarly, here is some footage that you were able to see on one of my prior reviews. So this did show up in an O knife review. You can see the laser etching on the side of a Damascus blade. So here you're seeing the laser pattern, very nicely done. You're actually seeing the different layers of steel. So all in all, very cool, very nicely done. And that's something that you can illustrate with something like this MS 800 digital handheld microscope. Very fun. And so that does get me into some of the details. The overall product dimensions, 58 by 58 by 160 millimeters. This has a 1.9 to one lateral magnification. The overall view is approximately 2.3 millimeters. So again, that's what I'm saying. A 2.3 millimeter wide view, much wider than a microscope. So it's really more like a macroscope. Focus distance around negative four to plus four millimeters. The objective lens type, this is an achromatic objective lens. It does have a multi-layer coating. And now just a real quick look at everything that comes in the box. So again, as I mentioned, of course, you do end up with the microscope unit itself. Then underneath here, you'll see it does come with a few other things. Like for example, it does come with your USB type C charging cable, it has a nice sort of pouch here. So very simple, but at the same time, just a protective little pouch. You end up with a cleaning cloth and your basic user's manual. And of course, one final consideration on top of all of this, it does not come with the memory card. So you're gonna have to invest beyond this into a card of an appropriate size and capability for this particular unit. And so, all right, guys, there you have it. A look at the Apexel APL MS008 handheld microscope. Pretty cool, all things considered. Now, I do have to say, all in all, a great opportunity to try this. I think it's useful. I think there are a couple things that, for me, left it a little bit difficult to use. Now, all in all, the footage is solid, pretty good overall quality, but it's the focus mechanism that I struggled with. Like, for example, you know, I had the uh, knife that I was trying to, you know, get the actual edge of the blade and focus on it, and while I was doing that, I was holding the actual item, and then at the same time, trying to rock the mechanism for the focus. And that was just a little bit difficult. That ring was kind of hard to get on. So you do really need to hold this, have two hands, dial it in, make sure it's perfectly flush and flat on the surface. And then you kind of back this around in different directions and wander on the focus to get it nice and crisp. If not, the picture looks pretty good, but the focus can go a little bit soft if you're not careful. So I think, and I don't know what you'd really do. I'd almost like to see like a thumb wheel right here that allows you to push it up and down. So if you're holding this and trying to get on an item, you could just dial that focus with a thumb wheel or something like that, maybe up higher. The fact that it's down here, it doesn't make it one handed and where this is hand held, sometimes you're holding the item that you wanna look at. Like for example, right now, if I hit record on my hand, and I'm trying to focus on my skin, 
well, I'm doing the best I can to like rotate this thing around and get it into focus, but it's a wicked struggle. And I mean, I can do it, but like, there we go. It just takes too much effort and it's not fluid. And you know, for the types of things that I'm going to be leveraging this for, I kind of need to use one of my hands while I focus. And that I think is a little bit of an oversight in terms of the design. But other than that, I do think it's cool. I mean, trending in the right direction. Think about the fact that now we have this like little microscope. And again, I go back to my point being, it's more like a macroscope. It's like a macro lens. It's not exactly a microscope. It doesn't go quite far enough down into the details, but all in all, really cool. And so again, I would like to say thank you very much to the people at Apexel who did provide this for review. And for the rest of you, if you like this content, do me a favor, take a look at my Outer Limitless 2 channel, which is more on the tactical and firearm side of things. At this point, that channel is growing quickly. I have a ton of videos up there. So if you like what you see here on Outer Limitless, do me a favor and check me out on Outer Limitless 2. So all right, guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.